Thank you. Um, Peter Foster, tell us about your story today. You've reported the Ireland Brexit proposal is in tatters. Downing Street disagrees. Well, Downing Street is rather careful with its words. Downing Street says they can find a solution if all sides work together productively, and that's a big if. What we saw this week uh, on Wednesday was the end of five rounds of technical negotiations after the European Council in March. Uh, and my story uh, is essentially that the uh, two options Theresa May put forward in the Mansion House speech have been rejected by the EU. The idea that we'll collect tariffs on behalf of the EU has been ruled out, and the idea that we can somehow avoid a hard border in Northern Ireland by using technical solutions and trusted trader schemes. So, in that sense, it's back to the drawing board for the Brits. It doesn't mean there aren't any solutions, but the ones that Mrs May advanced in the uh, Mansion House uh, speech are looking extremely shaky. Right. Do you accept that, that those two uh, proposals from Theresa May are, have pretty well been um, eliminated? I think the customs partnership is sort of the bigger picture stuff. That is in difficulty. But, I mean, the, the, the game plan, on the technical side, I don't agree with that at all. I've done my own paper. And Lars Carlson, the EU's own advisor, mm. has come up with a solution already. What the EU is doing, the game plan, is to use the, the Northern Ireland border issue to keep us locked in the customs union because as Katja Adler has reported they're terrified in, in her words of us being super competitive outside of the EU. Right but if they've rejected those two proposals and the UK government has signed up to the third backstop solution which is keeping certainly Northern Ireland in a customs union if not the whole UK What's the alternative for Theresa May? Well, as I say, I think my research on a technical solution, you're not talking about Canada, US, you're not talking about 370 million, it's six and a half million. There's more people that actually cross the Turkish EU border under a customs union, same customs union, uh, twice as many cross the border uh, than the entire population of Northern so Ireland. So you still think the technical solution is, yeah. is viable? Absolutely. Um, what do you say to that? I mean, where does it leave the negotiations? Uh, it leaves Mrs May trying to square a triangle. You know, she's made three promises. That there won't be a hard border in Northern Ireland, there won't be a border in the Irish Sea, and she will leave the customs union. The truth is that only two of those promises can, be, can hold true at any one time. Now, I think technical solutions could have a role to play, but what's clear from, if you read my story, from, from what's coming out of Brussels, is that uh, technical solutions can have a role to play at the margin. But in order to get there... The starting point is that we join the customs union. Michel Barnier has said that himself. Mm. A very senior Irish diplomat said to me, the customs union doesn't fix everything, but without it you can't fix anything. The next step of that question is, the EU are also clear that the customs union doesn't fix everything and you're going to need high levels of alignment. And this is why it's so toxic for Brexiteers, for David Davis, because actually to get to a world where those technical fixes work, you end up pretty close to Brexit in name only. Will we be in uh, the customs union um, in, in all but name? Well, we've got to avoid that because, you know, the customs union has 20,000 tariffs. And I'm amazed, to be honest, that Labour actually supporting the customs union. You know, you're talking about hurting the poor, 60% tariffs on shoes, mm. uh, you know, on meats, on, on apparel. But with this border issue in Ireland, will Britain have to stay in the customs No, I don't think so at all. I mean, as I say, their own advisor has a solution to it now. Right, but it's being rejected by the EU. Well, um, where, does it go, where does it go from here, uh, Polly? Do you think at this point that Theresa May, even though she has categorically said and promised that Britain will not be in the customs union, that, that she's really going to renege on that? Well, it's been put perfectly. She's having to renege all the time because she made red lines that were contradictory. I mean, she, uh, you know, exactly as you say, an impossible triangle. My hunch is that we will end up in something so like the customs union. It may not quite be called the customs union, because in the end, that's what suits us. The fantasy of all this trade elsewhere compared with the tariffs and the barriers that will be put up against us if we don't are just so daunting as one industry after another discovers what's about to hit them, including even, ironically, the fishing industry, who wouldn't be able to sell their fish if there was no deal and there was no uh, proper customs union. Do you do you agree that that is now a more likely scenario for the no, government no, to agree no, to? Not at all. Why? Uh, because, look, even the EU now, their official position is basically C to plus plus, if you put it that way. They've given ground on but, services, they'll offer us services, we'll have a 100% tariff free, 100% quota free deal. That's where we're at. They've agreed that because we import so much more, we will be their largest customer outside of the all EU. All right, well, let's, though, get back to the negotiations. Um, 
Michel Barnier, according to you, has announced that the talks are going to pause until the Northern Ireland issue is resolved. Is that right? N not, not precisely, actually. What, Michel, what I say in my, in, my, in my report is that Michel Barnier has ended the internal scoping process right. of the EU. So the discussion in the EU about what the future looks like has essentially reached a pause An because impasse. there isn't much else to talk about. Until the Brits come forward with a workable solution, you can't really get into a serious discussion about what the future is going to look like. So what that speaks to the fact is that if we don't get a deal on Ireland by June, you're going to be looking at an increasingly flimsy document, non-binding trade document, mm -hmm. uh, to go with the withdrawal agreement in October. Right. Do you agree time's running out? Well, the pressure is on, but no, the point is, we, we don't have any tariffs. You don't have any, you know, the, the point about negotiations is it's all about getting rid of tariffs. We don't have any tariffs to get rid of. We what, don't have any quotas to get rid what of. What makes you think the so EU well is going to do an about turn on this issue on Northern Ireland? It's putting pressure on because its preferred policy is for, to force us staying in the customs union. But that is absolutely ridiculous. It's not our policy. The policy hasn't changed. But it's not just pressure from the EU, is it? It's pressure here too. I mean, the House of Lords, as you know, defeated yeah. the government yeah. um, as part of the EU withdrawal yeah. bill. Um, how much do you blame your Tory colleagues in the Lords? Well, I think their vote was absolutely shameful. I mean, here, here you have a very a privileged group of people forcing the poor to be hurt more by their 20 Oh, that's absolute nonsense. The idea yes, that the Conservative is. Party and the Brexiteers the are standing here for the poor, I think probably... Oh, no, sorry, the Customs well, Union. Well, let's yes. not have a battle about who's spoken more to the poor, but <laughs> carry, carry, on, um, carry on what you were saying, Polly. I mean, this is realms of unreality. We're, we're going to get everything we want and we don't have to give anything away instead. What alarms me most of all about the Irish border, though, is that I hear a number of Conservatives, including Boris Johnson, suddenly saying, well, you know this, the, the, the Good Friday Agreement, it's time we renegotiated, we thought it. And you think, exactly. right, are they really willing to make that sacrifice? Over three, you know, 3,000 people killed and they're willing to go back to those days. I think any undermining of the Good Friday Agreement particularly as things are very tense in Northern Ireland now anyway with no, no government in power is very alarming. Surely, How dangerous is this moment, Camilla, well, for Theresa say, May? the only people who would be undermining the Good Friday Agreement would be the EU if they force a hard boil on Northern Ireland. The EU has said it doesn't want it, Britain has said it doesn't want it, and Ireland has said it doesn't want it. And actually, this is a negotiation, so the government does have another strategy. I'm not advocating it, but the Brexiteers will say, say no deal. Right. That leaves two problems. First of all, it leaves a massive problem for Ireland, because if Ireland has the common external tariff slapped on it, it will have tariffs on its beef and it will go bankrupt. Second of all, if we withdraw the £40 billion pot of cash, the EU goes bankrupt. It will have to turn around to all of the countries and say, could you give us a bit more, please, because we've just lost Britain's £40 billion. But That's where, a fairly good where negotiation we are now, stance, one though, imagines. Where we are now, though, Camilla, how much pressure is Theresa May under politically here? We've had the House of Lords defeat. We've had this uh, motion that has been tabled by Tory rebels calling on the government uh, to make being in an EU customs union a negotiating objective. How seriously should ministers take this? She's in. Uh, she, of course she's under political pressure, but she needs to also think about the public. The public voted for Brexit. The public doesn't advocate appears against the people scenario and the public doesn't also like this rhetoric about reversing Brexit. Brexit's happened. We mustn't lose sight of what the public wants Nobody in all this. Nobody knows what the public voted for. They voted The public to be knows out. exactly what they no, voted they for, Polly, for goodness sake. You right. don't speak for them any more than I do. Well, we know uh, they uh, voted uh, for us. Nobody That's has changed their view. Any polling has suggested that the Brexit and Remain vote remains the same. So you haven't had a load of Brexiteers pulling no. their hair out going, oh, I didn't I vote for this, I didn't vote for this. I agree. So they didn't nobody, know what they were voting nobody for. Nobody knows then. Whether, what they they think about the customs union, union. nobody they haven't changed don't their talk, mind. Don't talk over each other. Polly, just end that point and then must come back to mm. Peter. I just say that, you know, we know that we've voted for out. I, I totally agree. People haven't changed their mind much about that. They haven't. But what out means is what all of this is about. I think it's what clear what out about. means now. An out that, that really does us harm or an out that minimal so damage. The frustrations that are being voiced over mm. there, the, the problem is that the accident of history creates an external EU border in Ireland. Theresa May doesn't want to put a border in the Irish Sea and she has a treaty obligation in the Good Friday Agreement not to undo the borderless arrangements of the Good Friday Agreement. So she cannot deliver on that for the frustrations, people who want to be out. She can't physically do that. And so, to David's point, if the island thing didn't exist, we could be sitting here having a conversation about tariffs, about trade-offs, mm. or whether we want to do rules of origin. But about that. this... 
is where the, the conversation mm. because mm. she doesn't want to break up the United Kingdom and she doesn't want to ruin the Good Friday Agreement. So what's the solution in your mind for her? She's in rocks and hard places. She has to join a customs union because if you want an all UK solution, mm. right? Because she doesn't want to break up the sake of argument. She joins the customs, the customs union, mm. and then the devolved institutions in Northern Ireland say, okay, we'll be aligned on goods and agriculture. It doesn't solve the problem because the chlorinated chicken, etc., that we might have done a deal with the Americans, is still going to have to be policed in the Irish Sea border, and she can't but sign up to that. I just going to say, as, as, as we sit here, we've got the Commonwealth down the road. They're talking about £700 billion pounds of deals. We, we can't do our own trade deals. We stay in the customs union. I'm on the trade committee of the EU. They're not doing a great job. They haven't got one with China, with All India, right. United States.